Hello and welcome to Gigat Play Studio Tutorials. In this tutorial, we look on a non photorealistic render inside the new VU 2015. You can access properties on non photorealistic render by clicking on the options on your top navigation bar. The icon, which represents like a circle with some lines, in this case, you open these options. Sometimes, when you open your advanced options, may be collapsed. You can expand them and access directly to more advanced options. To make non-photorealistic render actually work with your camera, you need to be sure you're going inside the camera properties and enable your non-photorealistic render checkbox right on the bottom left corner. From this menu, you can also access edit, same properties that we have before, or you can also select some presets if you save any. Currently, you can see we have three presets. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this one. We'll go to open non photorealistic render options. We'll notice we have three main windows and one advanced options on the bottom. Beside that, we also have some configurations and reset. So, for example, let's go ahead and open unit and DPS. And right here, you can see we have it. Um, our settings where we can say dpi dot per inch if you're using print you may go 300 or 600 for the screen currently i will use just 72 dpi and you also can use it um, type of a unit specify pixels millimeters dark or pixels so we'll leave it as proportional default to the view when you install it so outline effects will work for us showing the lines on the edges and this is line will apply or outline will apply to the edge of the objects change of materials or if we have a very sharp change in the normals on the object the also outline effect we can specify from default we can use it draft ink some preset that or maybe you already saved some of outline and when we start working we'll have it a new one custom currently because we don't use the it's no modification applied we don't see this same with a shader effect we can use it already predefined shader effect that come with the view or we can create our own and loading from preset or we'll use it custom right here we have a combined effect which is combined outline and a shader effect and we can preview many times the combination already available for us so we can preview like a blueprint japanese painting or default and again as long when we start modifying you will notice we'll have a new options called custom so be sure you select that option if you want to preview so right in advanced options you can see we have an outline line styles line distortions line cloning and shader options you can always modify them and save line style on the top you'll notice we have a specific a specification for which edge we want to use it all edges currently selected object materials or normals those three uh, options that npr will select it for purpose of tutorials we'll just use it all edges also next box is enabled so we can preview our changes if you disable none of the uh, outline effect will apply it so let's go back to re-enable and first we will look it's a round marker round marker it's a basic outline it's a straight line which is provided with few options for us the color of the line thickness of the line and opacity opacity work from 0 to 1 so if you want half opacity you're just going 0.5 and this will apply the health opacity. Notice right here in outline effect, now we have our property custom. And I want to be sure it's selected so I can preview my modification on the screen. As well, now in combine effect, we also add new option custom. And I want to be sure this two custom is selected on both screen. And when you start working on the shaders, I want that selected in the shader. So whatever modification I applied, or it will be change of the color, thickness of our opacity. I want that will be enabled and available for me to preview my effect. Okay, the next we have it a neon type, and you can select by 
selecting and be sure the checkbox is enabled because sometimes you can go through options and it's not applied as long checkbox is selected so i'm going neon click on the checkbox enable and a neon is very similar to round marker a simple line it will only apply some blurring to the edges so it's have a decreasing opacity to the edges let's go set our opacity one let's set maybe thickness 10 so we can preview you can see right here distinguish we have this kind of more blurring applied to the edges we also can apply um effect of the fade explanations but be sure you will set a wider line so you can preview a little bit more in this case okay let's take it down and reset next we have the watercolor and the watercolor it is um stroke that imitate watercolors with slightly variations of the thicknesses and opacity you can control those in your watercolor stroke you notice right here we have the percent of internal opacity so we have it zero let's go set this a little bit bigger to 15 so we can preview you can see we have an outline of the ring so this is ring opacity which is outside and internal opacity it's inside so in some case where a color maybe you want to add like more edges so we can create less opacity inside and more on outside next we have our ring thickness so this is will variation added to this side where we can make a little bit more noise so let's increase noise scale dramatically and you can see right here how much it is noise added to the line we can also modify maximum and minimum on the noises notice how this noise will modify a little bit of this effect we can bring a bit more opacity outside the ring and leave it inside again this is will thickness out of written thickness will wire, um, add some variations to also noise kind of opacity but overall we can preset very close to the watercolor effect so let's bring a little bit down and right here you can see we have a very nice um, effect of the watercolor brush again currently we work on outline but the same effect can be applied for materials so the next we have a noisy effect okay, let's select it and this is one which allowed us to create type of the chalk charcoal ink gouache or um, any other ones which have a variation of thickness and constant opacity so for example you can see right here how much thickness start changing okay, right here is add additional all this noisiness uh, properties what we have it same things we can modify color thickness overall up, um, opacity and as a separate group we have it for the noise stroke which is uh, fade exponent again look on the sides right here where we have an exponent of the thickness of this um, fade on the side so think about like almost blur on the edges okay we have a transition width and a transition you can see with higher transition we add a little bit more details or blurring to the sides again in some cases it's if you increase uh, size of your thickness of the brush you can preview the effect a little bit better so right here with a transition width you can see how blurring is reducing and with increasing again this is two both combinations that we reduce fade explanation you can see this is will reduce some edges of that so the fade it's how far away those going and transitions it's how the um, darker or lighter will be so again if we reduce you can see right here we have it less blurring and a little bit more okay next we have the string for the base so let's increase overall notice right here as i modify my y factor and modify my base factor they are linked so in some cases modifying base will reduce y but 
if you have it one lower, you can always modify y or x factor. And this is will apply to the string of the brush stroke. And then next, we also have it a noise. So overall, you can see the noise variation in size. So we can increase the level of the noise, which create a longer increased size of all. And as well, we have it a scale. Currently, you can see Y scale. So we're stretching them. We can going up as a direction, so they will go more as a parallel. So in this case, we have it our noise and a different direction of the stretching noise along of the our line. So we want to almost create a fur type effect. We can go on the sides, increase noises. Okay, increase expedient, and we have it almost like a fur you can go on the sides of this. Okay, let's go a little bit lower maybe. Just so we have it like almost hair type. Anyway, you can play around with those brushes, but overall it's understanding on this string of the strong and the noises. We could have additional options applied and we we'll look on them in a modifiers, thickness, opacity modifiers. Those are additional options we can apply to each stroke that we selected. So the next is a multi-fiber. And this is to simulate gouache or oil painting. You can see how many count fibers we have it. So we can increase those. It's another case how many lines will passing through. We can modify thickness of those lines. So let's go to reduce a little bit so we can see a little bit better. You can see thickness of the lines. Okay. We have it also light variation applied to them. Okay. And currently it's hard to see on this case. We also can use it um, source image for the brush. And this is nice if you have it maybe already scanned some of the oil texture or everything, you can apply those the, to material or original render. We also have it color variation, so we can have it weight on the color applied. And think of your paint with oil, this is how heavy you apply of the paint, how much of the painting you applied according to the size. So heavier as well as collecting of the power or collection steps. So in some cases, if you want to apply heavier painting, you want to increase weight and probably work or play with a collection of the power or how many steps it's taking to achieve this result. If you look closer on lines, you'll notice they're not straight. They have a little bit jittering. And this is, will help you to stop in your jittering section that we can specify radius of the jerking you can and as well as a speed is how fast it's happening so in another case speed is a frequency with how fast jiggering happen and radius it is how much jiggering of the amplitude of this how big amplitude is happen so we can go to reduce you can see right here we applied so right here we have our basic stroke types. We can apply additional color modification. We'll look on the next tutorials, but overall this is few basics of the uh, stroke types that come in a view with non-photorealistic render option.